<laughs> Let's see. There you go. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a good, good day so far, wherever you are joining, just getting settled and set up here. Uh, hi, love grows. Uh, so hello, Karen, ready to listen and learn. Thank you always for your wonderful content. Well, thank you so much for, for such a thoughtful way to start the live today. And, and thank you for, for being here and supporting uh, the channel. Hi, Mike, 88GT. Nice to have you. Frowmy, nice to see you. Thanks for letting me know. The sound is good. You guys you guys are a great audience and I appreciate you joining every week uh, and, and for being here. So as I have in the chat box at the top, there we go. Uh, now I have a comment at the top of the chat box. Um, I will uh, look at the chat for constructive comments and questions at the end of the live stream today. Uh, please keep it clean and respectful of each other and me in the comments. And let's have a nice, let's have a nice live show today. So we are talking about how to be a good wife, three things your husband wish you knew. That's where we are going today. The reason that I want to talk about how to be a good wife. Uh, yesterday uh, was my 40th birthday. And um, I have learned over the years not to make a big deal out of my birthdays, even the big ones like turning 40, and to use my birthday as a day of reflection because I live everything that I teach. I put into practice everything that I teach. That does not mean that I am perfect by any means, but I am on a path, uh, which you guys know I call the journey of being happy. Uh, which is really a journey of growing and learning from life's challenges to become the best version of ourselves and to actually really self-actualize, to become the most of who we can be and to be, again, the best version of ourselves. And that's the path and journey that I have been on uh, the last decade, which I am incredibly, incredibly grateful for. So yesterday um, and and kind of through the week has been one of of really being incredibly grateful and reflecting on the last decade of how I've grown and learned through my marriage, through my career, uh, through my life uh, in these last 10 years and my 30s. And a huge part of that growth and a huge part of my focus has been my marriage and my relationship with my husband. And so I thought today that I would share some of the things, some of the, the core foundational principles that I have learned in my marriage of how to be a good wife. And, and I, I like my thumbnail for today that wife is not a four letter word. Uh, wife is often seen as uh, degrading to women. And I certainly had to do my work around the word wife. And now it is something that I embrace and something that is the most important thing to who I am in my life, uh, a role and a responsibility that I take pride in, that I take seriously, and is really a guiding light for me in my life to build myself as a woman of character, a woman of integrity, and and to really become the best version of myself. So this is is why I wanted to share this today and let's just let's dive in and and get started. The first the first thing you need to know to be a good wife and and what your husband wish you knew. Be kind. Nice is not enough. There is a difference between being kind and being nice. And this has been a, a huge part of my journey because I was someone who was nice. I was a nice wife, a, a nice person. But what I learned is that nice is not clean. Nice comes with hidden agendas. It comes with calculations and it comes with expectations and conditions. And so as a wife, I have had to learn and I teach other women 
to be kind, to be kind, which is clean. It, it's unconditional. It comes without expectations. And that can be very difficult for us as women in our marriage because we play nice to get something back in return. And it is loaded with expectations. And what I think and have learned over the years in my marriage and, and working with women and men of what your husband wish you knew is that good men are simple. They don't need much from us. In fact, most good men would, and I, I saw this in a comment recently, most good men would be happy and fulfilled in the relationship if they got their their kind, loving wife 10% of the time. If they just got got little crumbs, they would go and and go get the moon and stars and lay them at our feet every single day that even just a, a fraction, and, and I, I saw this in a comment, a, a good man made a, a, a wonderful comment of, I just wish that I had the woman I married who liked to have fun, who was playful, who was open and seemed happy. If I just got her once a week, I would be thrilled. I would be absolutely thrilled. So most, most good men, they, they don't, they don't need a lot. And, and being kind is, is something that when we slow down and we're engaged with ourselves, it's also in our nature as women underneath our walls, underneath the controlling ways that we have our selfishness, the protection we build around us. It is in, in our nature to be kind, but being kind requires us to, to slow down to be thoughtful and actually consider our husbands in a genuine, authentic way. For me, I, I know that it was very confusing to my husband in the beginning of our marriage. So we've been together um, 15 years. We've been married almost 10. We got engaged when I turned 30 and we got married uh, shortly before I turned 31. And is that right? Yeah. Shortly before I turned 31, uh, we got married and I, like I said, I was a very nice, a very nice person. Um, I did all the right things. I played the role of a good wife, but like I said, that's not enough. And it was really a mind F for my husband because here I was plain sweet, plain nice, going through the motions of the things I knew to be nice. Yet he often felt wrong. He felt judged. He felt criticized. Uh, he felt my expectations in return and that he could never quite measure up. He often felt that he was in trouble with me. And he was correct in what he felt. Because those are my woman ways that I put on to him and put on our marriage, even though I played nice and it was really confusing to him because I had that facade and he couldn't figure out why do I, why do I feel so wrong and why do I feel so judged? And it was very, very confusing to him as a good man. And if you read through some of the comments on my videos, you will see good men expressing that very experience in their marriage, because I think a lot of us as women will, will wear that facade. We will play nice. And then we're confused. Then we're confused of why is he distant? And why doesn't he want to be around me? And why, why does he withdraw from the relationship? And we, we don't recognize that that's not enough. You can't just play a good wife. It's something that has to be important to you and a value to you and something that you take seriously as an expression of who you are and the responsibility that you took on when you made the choice to get married. And with that comes being kind. So what we need to know about kindness, if, if nice is calculated and conditional and comes loaded with expectations of needing something in return, or even nice can, can come with that false sense of validation for who we are. So we do nice things to look 
good and to look like a good person and keep up with who we think we are supposed to do or supposed to be. And there's no genuineness in that. So if that's nice, what's being kind? Being kind is is having no expectations. It's the things we would do for a stranger or someone in our life without needing anyone to know that we did it. And something that people don't understand about kindness is kindness in order for it to be genuinely and truly kind, for it to be clean, to not come with expectations. Kindness is something we do for ourselves because of the kind of person we want to be, who we want to know ourselves as, and the standard of which we want to hold ourselves to as people and being the best version of ourselves. And I know that that can sound selfish. Like, well, you can't be kind and do the, do it for yourself, Karen. It doesn't work that way. But actually, when we do kindness for ourselves because of who we want to be and how we want to know ourselves, the character and integrity we want to have as people, the character and integrity we want to have as women, it's only from that place as an expression of who we want to be that kindness can be clean and without expectations. We do kindness because it, in living with character, living with integrity, holding ourselves to that standard makes us feel really good about who we are. And then the other person, in this case, our husband, gets the benefit with no strings attached. And it's only from that place that it can be clean and integrous. When we do kindness for others, we have a hidden agenda, even if it's just to look good. We often have expectations of wanting something in return, and there's no you in it. So it's when we put ourselves into it as an expression of who we are that we can truly, truly be kind without needing anything in return. And as a wife and being a good wife, being kind to your husband is not doing the things for him that you want or the thing, doing things for him that you want to do for him. So he knows that that's what you want him to do for you. Again, that's being nice. That's manipulative and has conditions to be kind to your husband. It's actually slowing down to think of what would your husband appreciate? What would be kindness to him? And a wonderful question to ask yourself and being kind is, what would kindness do? And that slows you down. To be kind, you have to be slowed down in yourself. It's not something you can power through and just do and check a a box. It's slowing down to be engaged with yourself, to be thoughtful and considerate of your husband of what would make him feel special? What would make him feel cared for? And doing that as an expression of who you are and the kind of woman you want to be. So it might be something as simple as if you're coming home from work, slowing down before you walk in the door to make the choice to be in a good mood and be pleasant regardless of your day, regardless of the challenges or stress that you might have and leaving it at the door and coming home just in a pleasant, good mood. Or if you're home and your husband gets home, taking that time before he gets home to slow down, recognize that he's coming home and choose to be in a pleasant, good mood. That that is something that would be so kind to do for your husband. It's letting him watch his his favorite team on Sunday, letting him watch football and making him his favorite sandwich and bringing him his favorite beer. And then saying, hey, I'm going to head out, enjoy the game, or hey, me and the kids are going to head out, relax and enjoy the game. Again, not from a place of needing anything in return, but because of who you want to be. And your husband will just be floored Uh, Last example I have of another kind thing to do for your husband, learning to zip it. (laughs) Then when you 
you know, we all know the unnecessary comments that we throw out or the unnecessary nagging or the unnecessary or un unsolicited advice or opinion that we so love to give our husband, just zip it, leave it out. Not necessary. Um, this sticks out to me. I, I I don't know when this was. This was a while ago, but I remember coming home one day from work and I'm in the kitchen and a dish towel was like, was like on the, like hanging from the oven and it was just soaking wet. And the woman is me be like, why is the dish towel wet? And it's like, I had the conversation with myself. I'm like, Karen, well, obviously he spilled some water and and he used the dish towel to, to clean up the water and, and hung it up. Zip it. Not a necessary comment. No one needs to hear that. So simply learning to zip it and, and hold, hold your opinions. <laughs> hold your advice. Your husband's a grown man. He doesn't need it. Those are, are examples of considering your husband and doing things that would treat him with kindness that he would appreciate and he would enjoy. And again, that caveat is you have to do it for yourself of who you want to be. And then your husband gets the benefit. And the best part about kindness, it's really the golden rule and, and being married to a good man, their nature and who they are and how they live is kindness and thoughtfulness and generosity. And that can go out the window when as, as wives, we are emasculating, controlling, nagging, critical, judgmental, shaming. They begin to throw their hands up and like, it doesn't even matter what I do anymore. But when you begin to treat him with kindness, you have to go first. <laughs> Can't say, well, when he does X, Y, and Z, then I'll be kind. That's not how it works. You have to go first. And when you treat your husband with kindness and not needing anything in return, your husband as a good man will treat you with kindness. Likely he's already still treating you with kindness because in spite of our woman ways, in spite of how we show up often, unless it's gone too far and the marriage is too far gone, good men still adore and love their wives in spite of these woman ways that I'm speaking of and, and share about on my channel. So when you treat your husband with kindness, he will treat you with kindness. The second of how to be a good wife of what your husband wish you knew. Sex is how your husband feels loved and respected. Sex is how your husband feels loved and respected. Your husband is not a woman. He is a man. And sex is incredibly important to a man. And it's where we miss each other and, 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 and just go totally different ways as, as, as husband and wives. That if you ask a, a good man, what, what are the top three things that are most important to him in a marriage and in a relationship, sex is going to be number one, if not number one, two, or three, but often it's going to be number one. If you ask a woman, her, you'd ask a woman, what are your top 10 most important things to you in a marriage or a relationship? Sex might not even make the list. <laughs> it might be like number eight, nine, or 10, maybe, maybe. So we have to understand it as women that sex is incredibly important to men. And we know that. That's why we use sex as a weapon and we use sex to manipulate and control. And we all know how we do that and have done that. And what happens is that uh, we begin to treat our husbands like Neanderthals and that there's something wrong with them, that sex is so important to them. And we want, want to change them and make them so wrong for just who they are as a man. But you have to understand when you chose to get married and, and you made vows and you made a, com a commitment to your husband, you took on the role and responsibility to have sex in your marriage and enjoy it as a part of a healthy relationship. 
women need to understand. And, and this was, well, let me finish that thought. Women need to understand that sex is not an option in marriage. And it is not something that is inconsequential to a marriage. Sex is part of a healthy relationship in marriage. And this is one of the things I've been reflecting on because when I, my husband and I got engaged, I had already started withdrawing and putting a wall up around sex when in the beginning of our relationship and dating and, and leading up to us getting married, we had a, a, a very healthy, enjoyable sex life. And then I threw my walls up and that's very, very common for us as women. And it was, it was a, a really, really big challenge in, in even just my early thirties, which is so sad to me now. And I had to learn an important part of my healing uh, in my marriage um, and, th and through this decade of my thirties in the beginning was overcoming the walls I had built around sex in my marriage and, and recognizing that I couldn't have sex with my husband as a duty or a chore or an obligation. When we have sex from a place of obligation or as a chore, we feel used, we feel resentful if we're doing what we're supposed to do. That's a wonder, actually a wonderful example of being nice is, is doing sex to, to check the box and, and say done. Maybe I bought myself a week or two and then shutting down. That's not okay in a marriage. It's not, that's a, a cruel, cruel way to treat your husband who is a man in which this is very important to him. So ladies, let me make it very, very clear. You cannot have a healthy marriage. You cannot have a healthy relationship. If you are not having sex with your husband or you are shut down to sex and doing it as an obligation and a chore, it's not okay. And, and you can't have a healthy relationship, relationship or a healthy marriage from that place. We all know sex is part of a healthy relationship. And, and, and here is something that is very important, ladies. We all enjoy sex. If you remember when you met your husband or before you met your husband and you were dating and having different relationships with men, we couldn't wait. We couldn't wait to get together and meet up for a date and, and, and know where that, that was going to lead. And, and we can reflect back to the beginning of our relationship before we got engaged, before we got married and we were in the, the newness. We loved and enjoy having sex. We begin to put our walls up and I'm not going to get too much into that, but I, I do want you all to know trigger warning. <laughs> we're going to be talking or I'm going to be talking a lot more about our relationship with sex as women and the importance of it in a marriage and how to overcome the walls that we have built around it and how to overcome the withholding of sex that, that we have put into place in our marriage. And I'm also going to be talking about how everything we've been taught by the experts about sex is wrong, <laughs> that we are not ovens that need to be warmed up first. <laughs> That's another video for another time, but it's really, really important. We have been fed so many lies and so many myths and so many, so much misinformation about sex as women. And I'm excited to share my journey because it's been a huge journey uh, and, and wonderful journey in my marriage. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of and my husband is most appreciative of um, that I have um, healed and overcome in myself. And I, I'm excited to be sharing that. So we're going to be talking more about that on the channel. But that's the the number two thing your husband really wish you knew that that sex is how he feels loved and respected and that it's not an option in marriage that when we made those vows, that's the commitment we made. It's part of a healthy relationship. And when as women, we can reconnect with the fact that we enjoy sex, too, then it's something we do for ourselves and enjoy for ourselves that we get the benefit of it and our husbands get the benefit of it. But a key piece is we really do have to remember that we enjoy it and not have sex for our husbands as something to check off the list 
just because it's Im- Im- important to them, they can feel that. We have to learn to be there and be engaged and enjoy it for ourselves, which is all our husbands want. And then we don't have the resentment or feeling used or feeling um, that that's all we're good for, or that's what we're supposed to do. We can be in it for ourselves and our husbands get the benefit and you can have a healthy, healthy sex life in your marriage, which is a key piece, key important piece to having, being a good wife and, and having a healthy marriage. Number three, the number three way to be a good wife and what your husband wish you knew, accept your husband for who he is, not what he does or does not do. I'm going to repeat that. Accept your husband for who he is, not what he does or doesn't do. So you need to see the essence of, of who your husband is. I guess this is a good little, just simple reminder that my message and channel is for women who are married to good men, men who at their essence are responsible, hardworking, kind, want their wife to be happy. Most of us married good men because when we were ready to settle down, we stopped chasing the bad boys and we chose a good man. And the essence of a good man and in his nature is who you marry. And and what we do as women, because of our own unhappiness and ourselves and of all the ways we feel bad about ourselves and all the, the things that we judge ourselves for, criticize ourselves for, the things we think that are wrong with us, we project that onto our husbands and we begin to nitpick them apart and focus on all their flaws, all their um, mistakes, all their shortcomings. And we judge them and we criticize them. And we're constantly trying to change who they are, thinking that will make us happy. It never does. And we lose sight of the, the man that we married. And you need to understand that you want to accept your husband for the good man and person that he is, not the mistakes and flaws that he has. No one is perfect. And a good man is the first to admit, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes. I I add to the challenges and issues in the marriage. He knows that. But the, the fundamental difference between good men in women is that a good man, he focuses on the essence of who we are. Like I said, they still often adore us and think we're just wonderful in spite of the emasculation and our woman ways that play out in the relationship. They still see all the wonderful things about us. I see this in my husband all the time. <laughs> He focuses on all the wonderful things about who I am. That's just their nature. And and they have an insatiable want and desire to please us, to make us happy. Yet as women, we have an insatiable desire to point out their shortcomings, their flaws, their mistakes. When they don't do that with us, they don't focus on our flaws and our shortcomings. In a very good way, good men have very short memories that they focus on the good things in us. And so you want to begin to see the essence of who he is as a good man and stop focusing on thinking that he he's needs to go to the gym and work out and 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 be more fit or he drinks too much. I don't want him to drink that much. Or why is he still playing golf and watching football, when's he going to grow up? Um, or, oh, I, w- I wish that he would stand up to his mother and, and stop being such a wuss with his mother. Um, or just all the little things that we we focus on in their flaws. See the essence and remember the good man that you married and to know that his heart is in the right place even when he makes mistakes. And that's all a good man wants is just to be accepted for who he is and loved 
for who he is. And when you can do that, and like I said, in the beginning, even give him 10% of that, hopefully you can find it in yourself to do more, but even 10% of that. And he will, like I said, lay the moon and stars at your feet every single, every single day. So those are the three things your husband wish you knew the three ways to be a good wife, to be kind, that nice is not enough, that sex is important to your husband as a man. It's how he feels loved and respected. And number three, accept your husband for who he is, not what he does or doesn't do to focus on, on the essence of who he is as a good man. And the one thing I want to add to that, when I catch myself judging or, or being critical of my husband, I remember the innocence of who he is. I've shared before in videos, my husband's very playful and very lighthearted. And I can imagine just his giggle. And, and when he, he gets <laughs> the giggles and just his sweetness, he's so sweet. And, and remembering that, knowing that's who he is. And to know I've got plenty of my own shortcomings and flaws and he doesn't pick at those. He he sees the essence of who I am. And so we can return that. So the last piece I want to touch on is there's a caveat. There's a caveat to everything I shared today of how to be a good wife and the three things that your husband, husband wish you knew. There's a caveat. You cannot do these things to be a good wife. You can't be a good wife to play a role, to make yourself look good, to wear a facade. It will not work. Your husband feels the difference. You know the difference. And when we wear a facade and we're playing a role, we are not being true to who we are and we are not giving a genuine, authentic expression of who we are. In order to put these three things into practice, to be kind, to have sex and enjoy it and know that that's important to your husband, to accept him for who he is. These are things you must do because of who you want to be. It's counterintuitive to us. You have to do the things that are part of a relationship and part of being a good wife for yourself because of the kind of character an integrity you want to have as a wife and a woman, your husband gets the benefit. When we wear a facade, when we play the role, we get exhausted and it is tiring. <laughs> and it's a lot of work to keep up the facade. And typically we can't. And the facade can come up, come down very, very quickly once we get married. And then our husbands are like, whoa what happened to the woman I married? So it doesn't work to do these things from a place of putting an act on. It has to be fundamental to you of who you want to be and making a commitment for yourself that you made vows and you made a commitment to another person that you were going to show up. You were going to be your best. You were going to make it through the tough times and go through the challenges and still be there on the other side. So that has to be important to you. If being a wife and having a character and integrity is not important to you, the things I taught and shared with you today will never work. They will never, ever, ever work. And what we need to know is we all know how to be good, kind people. We can do it very easily to strangers or be a good person at work or at church or out in our community. And now we need to learn to do that and be that genuinely for ourselves as an expression of who we want to be and choosing to do it because of who you are, how you want to know yourself, and to be a woman of character and integrity. And your husband gets the benefit. If you can't do it from that place, you will be playing the role of a good wife and it does not work. And, and that's something that was very fundamental to my growth and, and changes in my marriage that I had to realize I couldn't fake it, that it had to be a genuine expression of who I am and who I want to 
to be and to do that for myself and allow my husband to get the benefit of that. And, and that's where we have a wonderful dance and, and a beautiful marriage that just keeps growing and keeps getting better all the time. So that's what I wanted to share today. Thank you so much for joining me. I am going to take a, a quick look through the comments to see if any uh, questions, uh, constructive questions or or comments stand out. <laughs> Thank you, Mona. Mona is keeps me on track here at Guest. Please like the video uh, if you haven't already and, and subscribe to my channel. Um, that helps helps these videos reach more people. Um, oh, that's very kind. A, a, a parent lawyer. Thank you. Uh, very nice to meet you. You're so young. Happy birthday. You don't look your age. Uh, that's very kind. Thank you so much. And I will tell tell my husband hello uh, from from the men I am educating. Uh, we have talked my I've talked to my husband because I've seen it come up in the comments um, recently. Uh, that could could you bring your husband on? And my my husband, uh, we're different in the sense I'm I'm more of an extrovert. Uh, my husband is very much an introvert. Um, but we have talked to, he was like, I will not come on a live. I said, I, I understand that. But so, but we might do a recorded video and I might interview my husband soon, uh, for him to share his experience and journey through this, uh, through our marriage and my changes and, and his changes as a good man. So keep an eye out, keep an eye out. <laughs> um, yeah. What should men do when their wife just won't listen and change? Thank you for that question, Abraham. Um, there is nothing that any of us can do just in a, a fundamental nature and truth uh, in life is we have no capacity or ability to change another. We only have control to change ourselves. So I advise good men that you cannot change your wife, that your wife is either open-minded meaning she wants to see these things about herself. She wants to change and grow and, and become a better person and a better woman. Or she is closed-minded, meaning she is not willing to see these things in herself. She is not willing to change. Um, she's not willing to, to step up and grow in these ways. And it's important for a good man to know that so that he can make a choice for himself that, you didn't get the wrong wife. You didn't get the wrong woman. You got a woman. And as women and the things I teach about, we are on a spectrum. Some women are on a very high spectrum of their emasculating ways. Most women are kind of average. And in the middle of the things we see in the movies and the sitcoms that we laugh at, and some women are on the, on the low end. And it's important for a good man to know where his wife is on that spectrum. So he can begin to be grounded in the reality of the dynamics between him and his wife as a woman and, and accept if she is not willing to a change so he can make a choice. And that choice might be to leave the marriage or he might choose to stay and, and grow and learn and navigate the marriage, knowing who his wife is. The key is not to continue once you know these things to not be a victim to your wife, that if she won't change, then you can't change the experience you have in your marriage. You have to embrace the emasculation. The reason that it works, the way that it works to weaken a good man is because of those limitations and weaknesses in himself that allow the emasculation to work. And so he uses his wife as his greatest teacher to see those weaknesses within himself so that he can strengthen them for the sake of his own sense of being a man and his confidence and, and strength in himself and use the emasculation to grow in himself. If he chooses to stay, take responsibility for that choice. And then he will become the strongest man that ever lived. <laughs> and the emasculation begins to bounce off. So it's, it's, it's learning what kind of wife and woman do I have making a choice about the relationship. And if you choose to stay, you have to learn to focus on the good things, accept the not good things and grow and learn from the not good things. So I have quite a few videos on that, um, especially the lives. Um, so check, check that out. Um, uh, 
can you, I'm seeing the questions at the end that that is a bit easier. So thank you very much. Um, can you cover briefly how you made a change in your relationship, the steps you took to become the wife you are now? Uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, I was very, very fortunate. I call this channel, the, the happy wife school, the red pill for women, red pill, meaning seeing the truth of our, our woman ways and, and the reality of how we operate in the dynamics of a relationship with a man, um, that our society has been blind to and, and justified. And, um, we turn, we laugh at it. Um, I was very fortunate about eight, nine years ago now, uh, to meet my mentor very early in my marriage. Actually, I'd only been married about five months. Um, and I met my mentor, uh, who helped me see that I was the problem in my marriage. And fortunately for myself and my husband, I am an open-minded woman who wants to change, who wants to grow and learn, who wants to take the hard look in the mirror and is willing to be humble and, and go to these icky places in myself. Um, and so I began to make that journey to look at myself in the very ways that I teach on this channel, uh, that my mentor helped me and supported me and taught me. And now I have the privilege and honor to bring this out into the world, which I believe is my calling and, and purpose from God is, is to bring these concepts out into the world as a thought leader in relationships of women and good men. Um, and that's in a very short nutshell, very very uh, a nutshell that that's been my journey. And it's really been through building a healthy relationship with myself, um, which I call the journey of being happy. And that then became mirrored back in my relationship with, with my husband. So that's, that, that, and then in a nutshell, um, let's see anything else. Um, great. Oh, thanks for being here, Dr. Thunder. Nice to see you. Thank you so much. Um, let's see, just seeing if any other questions. And thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, to see if I see any other questions. Um, all right. Uh, is it possible wives consistently miss these things because they are projecting and cannot believe that it would actually... Um, meet their husband's needs since it, it's never met their own. I mean, yes, everything we do as women is a, a projection, all, all the, the wicked ways and, and, and cruel ways I talk about in my videos, um, are a projection. The source of it is a projection from how we feel about ourselves and the unhealthy relationship we have with ourselves that then, then that's who we are in the relationship. That's why I teach women, you can't work on your marriage and, and fix these issues. You have to work on yourself to build a healthy relationship with yourself because the reason you have an unhealthy relationship with a good man is because you have an unhealthy relationship with yourself. Um, and it's, it's very, a very simple way, way to look at it. So I think that's, those are the questions I'm going to answer, uh, for today. I'm, uh, going to wrap up and, and my husband are, and I are celebrating my my birthday uh, today, just a, one of my favorite things to do with my husband is we love uh, to cook together. Uh, so we are going to uh, cook a special, special dinner this evening and enjoy each other's company and and have a nice time. So I've got a couple things to wrap up here and then I'm going to head out and enjoy my Saturday. So again, thank you all so much for being here. Make sure to like the video um, and I'll see you, see you all again very soon. Okay. Bye.